I've personally always connected more with the process of street photography, more so than the actual photos that I was taking. If I'm heading out with my camera, observing and taking photos, I'm pretty much doing what I enjoy. Rarely do I ever go out with a particular goal to document some untold story or to become recognized for my work in some way. To me, street photography has always just been a way for me to relax, uh, clear my mind, and it's a cliche saying, but in a way sometimes to escape. Now, despite that, I do sometimes get a little stuck and need some guidance, some structure to what I'm doing. And that's where the self-assignment comes in. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. You can use the link in the description to get 10% off your first purchase. Now, just like street photography itself, the self-assignment can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. But for the sake of this video and this exercise, we're gonna keep it simple. The whole point of the self-assignment in this sense is to get yourself out of a creative rut. By providing you with some structure to how to approach your street photography, which will hopefully in turn lead to you feeling a bit more inspired and motivated. Down the road, you can turn this into whatever you want it to be. It can become something a lot more substantial, maybe lead into a long-term project. But for now, let's not get that deep. The simplest way I like to look at the street assignment is by assigning myself a particular subject to focus photographing on the street. That could range from being a particular person, a object, color, a piece of clothing, a neighborhood, anything really. You can spend a lot of time trying to think of what to photograph, what to focus on, so I recommend you just pick something that's interesting to you and sticking with it. Again, you don't want to make it way too complicated where you end up not doing the self-assignment at all because you couldn't think of what you wanted to photograph. So the assignment I've set for myself is to photograph the construction and city workers of New York City. From construction workers, postal workers, food service workers, the people you see working on the street every day and probably don't give a second thought about. They're the people who practically keep this city up on its feet. So my goal for this street assignment is to just photograph them working on their break and hopefully maybe out of it create some sort of sequence of images that can help further tell their story. You know, I think it's an obvious subject matter, um, one that we tend to gloss over a lot as photographers. You know, if you're doing street photography, you see a construction worker, you don't really think of them as an interesting subject. But I think there's a lot more to say about what they do and what they mean to the city. So I think it's a pretty interesting subject matter to, to actually focus on for once. Now to keep things a bit more structured for myself, I'm going to stick to photographing around downtown Manhattan for this. So I basically laid it all out there and I'm feeling quite inspired and motivated to do this. So I, I guess it's kind of already working. All right, let's head out.
Alright, so, as you can see, I'm back home in Boston. Uh, I have the photos here on my iPad, and, you know, I'll be honest, I was quite surprised how many photos I was able to get for this um, particular theme that I was actually quite happy with. As you clearly saw in the video, I, I came across a lot more construction workers than any anyone else. What I found pretty interesting was the second I, you know, started to focus looking for a particular subject, in this case, you know, city workers, I ended up only seeing city workers on the street. Like, that's all I saw as potential subjects, which was pretty interesting because, you know, as I said earlier, I, I tend to look past, uh, you know, city workers or construction workers as, you know, interesting subject matter when I'm taking photos. So actually taking the time to focus and look for them as subjects in my photos, that was a really, really interesting experience, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. And sort of out of it, I, I've come to realize how interesting of a subject they can actually be. I think what I've experienced in this case can apply to any type of subject matter you don't particularly focus on all that much. There's a potential here through, you know, focusing um, all of your attention towards a specific subject that you might find new interest in something um, that you haven't really, you know, focused photographing before. Like I think now I, I see construction workers as completely different than how I initially viewed them. While I was doing this, I, I found myself photographing a lot of still life images, you know, around construction zones, and I found it to be an, a very interesting, well, I guess I found the still life images to be the most interesting to me. They sort of tell a bit more of the story of, of what it's like to be a construction worker, I guess. Like this scene in particular, you know, it, it tells the story of a, of a construction worker's lunch break or, or breakfast, I guess. Um, in this photo, you know, obviously there's no construction worker present, but um, clearly uh, <laughs> we, we knew he was there um, uh, simply because he, he didn't throw any of his stuff away. I felt like this was a, an interesting way to like sort of tell the story of a of a construction worker's lunch break. You know, you know, typically I'm, I'm walking down the street, I'm, I might see that coffee cup, you know, chilling there. It's it's nothing particularly interesting for me to, to photograph, but because I was focused in on telling the story of construction workers, this simple object became a lot more interesting to me to photograph. And I feel like it, it created a photo I, I probably wouldn't have taken had I had not done this self-assignment. This image here of a construction worker's helmet, I noticed on a bench. Looking at it now, I, I think it's a pretty, pretty powerful photo and probably my strongest photo out of all the images I took. As I said before, the self-assignment, it can be as a complex or as uh, simple as you want it to be. For the sake of this video and for this exercise for myself, I felt like sequencing the images I took on the self-assignment is sort of the last piece or last part of the the self-assignment. It's it's sort of like the the final presentation of a school project in a way. You don't necessarily have to do this, you know, if doing the self-assignment is as simple as just getting you out taking photos of something interesting to you that you, you know, it, it, as a way to, to motivate you, I guess. The whole point of this is to help you in whichever way you want, right? But personally, I think it's very beneficial for anyone doing the self-assignment to take the time to look back at the photos you took and sequence them out into you know, a little project that maybe further tells the story you were looking for.
I made my own little sequence to this self-assignment and I made a dedicated page on my website for it, so I'll have a link in the description for you to check out for yourself. This was all built through my website on Squarespace, who are also today's sponsor. You know, you don't need to have any experience to create something like this if you're using Squarespace. That's one of the best things, in my opinion, about that platform. So when building out this site, I had the option to start off with a template or build it out through a completely blank page. But for this, because I want to have this as sort of a long-term project in a way, um, I wanted to have a sort of dashboard to, to organize all of the past, present, and future self-assignments that I end up so it made sense to use Squarespace's portfolio template, which will organize all of the street assignments together into their own dedicated page. From there, it's, it's really as simple as writing what I want, dropping in my photos, and moving them around as I see fit. If you are interested in trying out Squarespace for yourself, you can visit squarespace.com slash Faisal, start a free trial, and if you're ready to make a purchase of your own website, uh, you can use the code Faisal to get 10% off. So when sequencing the photos out, I decided to use diptychs. Um, if you don't know what diptychs are, they're essentially uh, uh, like a two-part piece of artwork. Usually you'll see them in paintings or sculptures, but it can easily be two photographs that tell a particular story. I felt like an interesting way to use the diptychs was to pair a still life image that I took as well as photos of the actual workers from that same scene or area that I took the still image. This particular pairing is probably my favorite from the sequence. I saw this street cleaner um, and he was, you know, going at it, spraying the street up um, and I photographed him. He did look straight into the camera, which I felt made a, you know, a powerful portrait. But I also noticed the patterns that were being formed on the street from the soap in the water. Um, so I felt like that was a, an interesting photograph to to pair with with his uh, with his picture. So you can check out all the photos I selected for this self assignment in the link in the description. Um, let me know what you think of it. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this and I feel like this could easily become like a series on the channel where I set out with a particular assignment that I make for myself or even get you guys involved in it where you choose what I photograph and I, I see what I can do from it and reflect back on the pictures I take and, and put them together on this site. I think it will be a, a pretty cool thing to do and I don't know, you let me know. So let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that and maybe even throw in some assignment ideas as well. All right, that's all for me. Hope you enjoy this one. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.